She died six years after she retired. That's it. At the sprite young age of 67 is when she died. <sighs> Retires at 61. Still active in her community and died at 67. Man, don't let this be you. I, look, I just, you don't know what you don't know. You don't know how long you have. Don't freaking waste it. Working some crappy old job for some crappy old boss. Oh, I cannot tell you how many people I talk to. They're like, I like my job until I got a new boss. I like my job until the new company, uh, until a company bought us out. I worked with a guy just the other day, or a lady, and uh, her boss just freaking asshole, man. It's just the whole, it's just, you know, look, it's two sides of every story, I get it, but you're just sitting there, it's like, life's too short. Anyway, so let's go into the story of, um, well, of Miss uh, Lorraine G. Schwarm. Schwarm. Schwarm from Wausau, Wisconsin. And we're going to click on this. It's just a sad man. Um, and this is going to be from newspapers.com. There we go. All right. So here's a Miss Schwarm, Lorraine G. All right. She's 67 years old when she died in 1994. You see, 15 July 1994. 67 years old. Uh, she was born in 1926. All right. And she survived by her husband, Verdon. Schwarm, all right, and who she married in 1951, all right, so she's married for 43 years, but she only died at, at 67, all right, so let's keep going, because I, I just find this of interest, and you should too, actually, let me try to make this bigger, all right, all right, so that's her death notice, how did I come across Miss Lorraine Schwarm, let me share with you, so I'm reading about the swine flu, the Ford flu folly, the swine flu uh, vaccination debacle that happened in 1976 uh, through this book. And I can't say it, but I'll just show you uh, by Ida Onoroff and uh, Eleanor McBean. And uh, it's funny because Ida, when she died, was uh, known as a, uh, a virulent, if that's the right word, environmentalist. A naturalist, though, and I don't even, like this is where environmentalism lost their way because now environmentalism is all being it's just silly. It's just not, not, they're not in favor of what we would consider the old hippie way of being an environmentalist, a naturalist. And now environmentalism is just run by far left the watermelons, green on the outside, dark, dark red on the end. They're commies. But anyway, so I'm reading about this debacle, and I come and I come across an article. Check this out. Yeah, had it written about uh, the Business Week on May 3rd, 1976. Had an article titled "Swine Flu Vaccine Liabilities May Exterminate Suppliers," and uh, the the quote was "Swine flu vax may create more health problems than it is supposed to prevent." This is from Business Week. The potential claims arising from unforeseen side effects from the swine flu vaccine could wipe out the pharmaceutical manufacturers of the vaccine. According to the underwriters, which is uh, the federal insurance, the primary underwriter for Merck. Not only the product liability exposure, but the administrative tangles expected with a program of vaccinating over 200 million people in the space of a few months makes the risk uninsurable. Though Merck has done business with, a, with federal insurance for some 30 years, they only carry a $10 million deductible uh, they only carry an estimated $10 million on their liability policy. Underwriter felt it was not convinced that Merck had time to test the vaccine for side effects. One scientist had gone so far as to predict that the vaccine can actually cause serious damages, serious illness in a large proportion of the children and the elderly who are inoculated. Uh, and that's, uh, that again, that was from Business Week 5-3-1976. So I'm, re I'm looking up that and I come across this right here. Get the swine flu vaccine. It's, it's a little carbon copy to what we're talking about today in today's thing. Um, and right here, as Lorraine Schwarm, supervisor at Wausau Nurses, commented recently, there's no reason to be f afraid of the swine flu vax. It's one of the safest vaccines you can give. I've already got mine. I have no fears whatsoever in giving it. So I was like, well, who, I mean, just sad because she didn't, obviously didn't know what she's talking about, but she um, you know, followed the, the best science at the time. So I'm just looking her up and said, what was her story? Because I was like, whatever happened to her? Thinking, I mean, I don't know. And then still check this out. She died right there in 1994, July. Here in 1990, December 25th, 1990, she did this thing. 
I mean, only four years before she died. She had no clue she'd die four years after this. Look at this. Right there, she created this. Let us adore a crochet at the Verdon and Lorraine home. That's their house right there. They put that, whatever a crochet is. Crochet, crochet? I don't even know what that is. Uh, celebrates the holiday season. The crochet made by Verdon Schwarm's brother has been displayed for 32 years. So she still was still active putting stuff out in her yard. Presumably she did. Maybe her husband, I don't know. But I mean, I assume she wasn't ill. I don't know. Um, and then we keep going back here. We're going to see right here. 1988, 1989. So check this out. Um, hold on just a second. Let me make this bigger. Bring it over here. Uh, they want to replace Lorraine Schwarm in 1989. And this is what uh, April 1989, because she had just retired in 1988. Uh, just, man. And that's the county, because she was the chief uh, of nurses in the, um, in the Wausau City District, or whatever it is. And so then we'll see right here, 1988. October 17th, 1988. We're going to see her retirement. Uh, right here, Krubog recommended accepting the resignation of Fran Vo, whatever that is, and the retirement of Lorraine Schwarm, co-administrator administrator of nursing services, effective 12-31-88. So she died literally five and a half years after she retired. Just sad, man. Um, and let's just keep going down here. Uh, we'll go down because she was very, seemed like a very nice lady, man. Uh, very active in her church, very active in the community. Um, was a true believer in vaccinations and whatnot. So this isn't a, a ding on her whatsoever. Uh, uh, welcomed a grandson here. Um, and here, even this right here. <laughs> she completed the, uh, um, through the Lutherans, I think this is the Lutheran church. Yeah, take retirement plan. So Verdon and Lorraine Schwarm uh, have successfully completed the requirements to become leaders of a pre-retirement planning program known as SMART. They join 237 other smart leaders across the country who offer those near retirement help in preparing for their new lifestyles. Yeah, the workshops are sponsored by the Aid Association of the Lutherans. Um, so she wasn't forward into retirement planning. She probably got a nice pension. I don't know. But then we keep going down here, too. And um, I want to pause here. In 1981, uh, series directed the Challenge of Parenthood, a six week series of classes entitled Challenge of Young Parenthood. Uh, we're going to include a me medical doctor, a family practitioner who will speak on how children grow and develop, a PhD, a clinical psychologist of child management, a registered nurse, master of uh, uh, nurse practitioner, um, uh, you know, safety, emergency care and health problems in infants. I'm sure there are going to be family health planning services from this lady, family sexuality issues and family planning. Uh, and you can register with Lorraine. Look, I'm, she obviously bought hook on and sinker. I guarantee they're talking heavy on the Javas. Uh, back then and, and she bought it hook on and sinker and there's not like there's nothing wrong with they'll make it evil it just means you've been misguided but it's just sad and so you know she devoted her whole career to helping people obviously what she thought was helping people and god bless her obviously misguided without question misguided um you know, she just did what the authorities said to do and uh and sadly who knows what the results of that were either way she said, okay, I'm going to take a retirement class in 1961, a 1981, a smart class in 1982. I'm going to retire at the end of 1988. And six years later, she died at the young age of 67. So she retired at 61 and died at the young age of 67. So if you, uh, regardless, the point being is at the end of the day, you just don't know. You don't know how many years you have left. I know many of us have been following there. We're all going to live to 95 Life expecting is 78. I'm only 63, so I got 15. It just don't, has nothing to do with you. Nothing. Life expectancy is from the birth of an infant. You, I assume if you're watching this video, you're not an infant, all right? Yes, if you live, if you're 65 years out now, 65 years old now, there's a good chance you'll live until you're 80. I guarantee you that. However, many of us don't. Many of us don't. And that's just a fact, Jack. And so if you're preparing for 20 years, 30 years of retirement, assuming that's what you're going to have, you're making a big mistake. All right, let's see.